Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Indiana Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. We're really excited you're here. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, if you have any questions at all, feel free to use the Q&A button to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. They are there ready and available to answer any questions you have. Your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. There are more sessions happening. Feel free to sign up for more sessions for the next time slot. You don't wanna miss out on all the great information being shared tonight. And then lastly, this recording will be available a week from today. All sessions are recorded and can be accessed through strivescan.com backslash Indiana. We are in session B2. So this will be the order where my mouse is circling is the order in which our presenters will present tonight. So without further ado, I will get out of the way and hand it over to Embry Riddle Aeronautical University. I believe you're on mute. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Mara Miller, and I am with Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University, our Prescott, Arizona campus, but I'm going to share information with you about both of our campuses. Um, so first of all, if I can make it advance to the next slide. Okay, there it goes. So um, I want to share with you some of the programs that we have available for you. If you've heard of Embry-Riddle before at all, you're probably familiar most of all with our aviation program. That's what we best are best known for, and that's what the roots of our university really go back to. Um, so if you have that interest of training to become a professional pilot, aeronautical science is the name of the degree that you would like. And we also offer a variety of other majors as well uh, within the field of aviation. Next, we have our College of Arts and Sciences, and this college houses a variety of majors um, spanning from biology to astronomy and physics, computers, psychology, forensic sciences. We also have a college or school of business, and these programs are excellent on their own, regardless of what you're interested in doing. If you're interested in business, these are great programs. But in particular, if you have an interest in working in the aviation industry, if you do aviation business administration, you're going to have an edge over other aviation or over, over other business graduates because you're already going to have an intimate familiarity with what the aviation industry is like. Um, our College of Engineering is actually our largest college with aerospace engineering being the largest and most popular major that we have on both of our campuses. Aerospace engineering covers both aeronautical and astronautical engineering. All of our engineering programs that we have in this college, um, you get to start with hands-on um, right off the bat from the very beginning of the program. Um, all of the facilities that we have available for students to use, all of our labs, the wind tunnel labs, the 3D printers, um, space systems labs, all of the different things that you have, you get hands-on use as an undergraduate. And because we focus on undergraduate education, you don't have to fight with graduate students to access the facilities or get attention from your professors. And lastly, we also have a College of Security and Intelligence Studies. This is a very unique college, the only one of its kind in the country. Um, students who are gravitating towards this college have an interest in a career with a three-letter agency such as the FBI, CIA, um, but there are definitely corporate applications with these programs as well if you have an interest in intelligence analysis um, or if you are interested in the cyber side, if you're interested in cybersecurity, there is a huge demand for people with these skill sets right now. Um, I alluded earlier in our College of Engineering to the hands-on opportunities, and I want to highlight that that is a feature of all of our degree programs and not just engineering. So, for example, um, we have a flight team and they compete with other collegiate aviation programs across the country. 
Embry-Riddle's flight team is the winningest team. We have won the most number of national championships. Uh, we do have two residential campuses, one in the mountain town of Prescott, Arizona. Um, it's our smaller campus at about 3,000 students. And then we have a campus in Daytona Beach, Florida at 7,000 students. Um, either way, you would have small class sizes at approximately 25 students. All classes are taught by faculty members. There are a wide variety of clubs and organizations available for you to get involved in that will include anything from professional organizations, to special interests, sororities, fraternities, um, something for everyone. We also have um, intercollegiate sports as well as just club and intramural sports. Um, we also have um, a very strong Air Force ROTC at both campuses as well as Army ROTC and Navy ROTC in Daytona Beach. Um, if you are interested in applying for admission, the best time to apply is in the fall of your senior year. If there happen to be any seniors here tonight, we are still accepting applications for this fall. We do ask that you select one campus at the time that you submit your application for admission. Um, we will waive your application fee, so if you will jot down this uh, four letter four letter code here, you can get your $50 fee waived. And then we just need a high school transcript to complete the application. Um, we do not have minimum requirements. We like to look at students on an individual basis, but the most important thing for you to remember um, is to make sure that you have met the math and science requirements for the program that you are applying to, particularly um, if you're looking at a technical program such as engineering, you wanna make sure that you are ready to start calculus one and a calculus-based physics class in your first semester. Um, if you have additional questions or if you would like more information, I would encourage you to reach out to me. Um, again, my name is Mara Miller and I am the admissions counselor for students in this region um, who are applying to the Prescott, Arizona campus. And I've also included here the contact information for my colleague in the Daytona Beach campus, Rebecca, and you can feel free to contact her if you have any questions at all about Daytona Beach. Thank you very much. Awesome, thank you. Our next presentation um, is from St. Louis University. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started. Uh, so my name is Richard Brown. I am uh, an admission counselor, obviously here at St. Louis University. So I represent the Indiana, Michigan, uh, parts of Illinois, mainly Chicagoland and Oklahoma territories. Um, so if you know anyone in those territories, I will absolutely be your, your go-to person here at St. Louis University. So a little bit about SLU. Uh, we are a mid-sized institution. Uh, we're a Catholic Jesuit institution. Um, so that I'll describe a little bit more about what the Jesuit values mean for an educational institution. We are ranked as a top 50 Catholic school and we have, uh, we have a really close relationships with our other Jesuit and Catholic institutions. Um, we do have two campuses. I myself am representing the St. Louis campus. I would love to eventually represent the Madrid campus, but those are two separate campuses. So they're both degree granting universities, but the one I'm talking about today is in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, we are the second oldest Jesuit university founded way back in 1818. That makes us the first university west of the Mississippi. Um, and I like to say, while we are an urban campus, if you come to our campus, we do have a more traditional enclosed feel uh, people in St. Louis do call it the SLU bubble. So when you're on campus, you definitely feel like you're on a you know traditional college campus with the, the green space and um, the traditional like brick buildings. And then you step off campus and you're right in downtown St. Louis. So it is a uh, a really great place to you know go to college and and learn more about a, a pretty historic city. Um, so what I, what I was saying earlier, we are a Jesuit university. And so, so what does that mean? The Jesuits are a um, order of Catholic priests that put a focus on a holistic education. So we, we truly believe in educating you as a whole person. So we want to strengthen you as a leader, as a person in every way uh, possible for you moving forward. So we like to say we don't necessarily care what you become after you leave SLU, but we, we care who you become after you leave SLU. Um, we also put our monies where our mouth is. So we, we have almost 2 million hours of community service per year. 
uh, done that. That is a huge component of being, being a Jesuit is uh, that community service and giving back to St. Louis and the surrounding areas. And so that includes students, faculty, and staff. So those Jesuit values start at the top and work their way all the way down to the bottom. So being a holistic school, that we like to say, trying to educate the whole person, um, we, we do have 90 different degree programs. Um, all majors are direct entry. So from the moment that you are admitted to that program, you are in. So some of our more popular majors are physical therapy, biology, uh, accounting and business, aerospace engineering, uh, nursing is an extremely popular one. And then we also have a pretty unique flight science program that utilizes two of our airports here in St. Louis. It's one of the pros of being in a big city. Uh, nursing, physical therapy, and occupational therapy, some of our uh, less traditional degree paths are also direct entry. So it's a six-year physical therapy program. You're in it from uh, first semester. Same thing with occupational therapy. That is a five years master's program. You're in it from the first semester. And then nursing is that four year and you're in nursing school from that very first semester. Um, so we also believe as Jesuits in very in hands-on learning, we believe that's the best way for us to educate our students. So we try and get you in the lab right away. No matter what your degree program is, uh, if, you, if you have lab work, we want you working with your hands as soon as possible. And that's uh, while we have so much lab space, we just built a new inter interdisciplinary engineering and business building uh, where that is mostly 90% lab space. So that is there specifically for those students to have that hands-on experience. Uh, student involvement. Uh, I think the great thing about being in an urban campus is not only do you, can you belong to a part of these fantastic student-ran organizations that you see here listed, but you're also in a, an extremely large urban environment. So if you aren't interested necessarily in doing something on campus, or maybe the older you get, there's going to be more opportunities for you found within the city of St. Louis. So it is a really fantastic place to get to know who you are and what you want as a student and as a person. And, and I think that SLU and the surrounding area provide more than enough experiences for you to, to, to guide your way through that process. Um, we are also an extremely friendly study abroad campus, so about 60 to 70%, depending on the year. This year, probably closer to 60 because of COVID, of our students study abroad. So most of them do go to that Madrid campus, uh, but we do have 82 different locations across the world that we've partnered with in the past, 45 of which are recurring, that we know exactly what classes you can take while they're there. And then all of your aid and tuition follows you. So you don't necessarily, the only things you have to worry about when going to study abroad is the flight there and then spending money while you're there. So we wanna make sure that that sort of belongs as that holistic education. So uh, how do you uh, become a Billiken? Um, the deadline for that we like to say priority deadline that we'd love to have most of our students applied by is December 1st. So if you're ever a junior, you do still have some time um, that is when a lot of these scholarships and a lot of those honors and scholarship programs, they have a December 1st deadline. So you can just go to slu.edu slash apply, uh, which is a free application online, or you can obviously use the common application. We are a, a test optional school. So all we'll really need from you is those official transcripts. You're gonna hear all of us say official over and over again, I'm sure. By now, you know, that means that has to come from your counselor or a school official. Um, if you're an international student, we do need some English proficiency, uh, proficiency tests done. And then we also obviously recommend letters of recommendation, resume, and an interview with your counselor. So we are test optional. So if you feel like submitting them, absolutely. If not, no worries at all. And that's just a, a little bit about St. Louis University. Great, thank you so much. Really helpful information. Um, we are almost about halfway through. Um, and so I do wanna set, uh, remind um, our attendees if you would like to submit any questions, you can do that now through the Q&A um, chat or Q&A button. Um, and again, our representatives are there and ready to answer any questions that you may have so far. Our next presentation is for Purdue University Northwest. All right, thank you so much. All right, hi everyone. My name is Amy Miller and I am the admission counselor representative at Purdue University Northwest. If you're not already familiar with PNW, we are a premier metropolitan university located in the heart of Northwest Indiana, 
we like to say that we are right in between the downtown streets of Chicago and the sandy shores of the National Indiana Dunes Lake Shores. We're really excited about that. Um, at our campus, we have two locations for students to take advantage of. We have our Hammond and Westville campuses. In between the two, we have about 10,000 students. So here's a little snapshot of PNW. We have over 70 different areas of study housed in our five academic colleges. Those would be our College of Business, Engineering and Sciences, Humanities, Education, Social Sciences, Technology, and Nursing. We have many minors included in those as well, which um, in total make quite a bit over 100 uh, different majors for students to choose from. Like I mentioned earlier, we have roughly about 10,000 students between our two locations, which makes us a mid-sized university. But one thing that PNW really takes advantage of is having that personalized family one-on-one -on -one atmosphere. We want students to know that you are a name, not just a number to us. So that's why we strive to have that smaller student-faculty ratio. So our normal class size is roughly about 12 to 15 students to a professor. And then the higher up you get in your major, it may be even smaller. So you're gonna have that great cohort uh, family atmosphere, like I mentioned. Most of our students are full-time, meaning they're taking at least four or five classes a semester to graduate in that four-year time period. We are very proud to be a diverse university and having over 47 different countries represented. And like myself, I am proud to be part of the 66,000 alumni that have called PNW their home. Many alumni continue to live and work in the Northwest Indiana area, but many have gone on to work not only around the country, but around the world as well. So the application process to PNW is a pretty simple one. You can apply directly on our website, pnw.edu slash apply. Our application for this upcoming fall is still open. So if you're a senior, you can definitely still take advantage of that. Our application for fall of 22 should be opening up uh, early September, so make sure to check those announcements for when that specifically comes out. Again, like you guys have been hearing, we will need those official transcripts directly from your high school guidance office. They can email us, email it to us directly, or they can use third party um, such as Parchment or Naviance. We do have a $25 application fee, which can be paid at the end of the application. And then you do have the opportunity to take advantage of a personal statement. This is by no means required, but it's a great way for us to get to know you outside of what's just on a piece of paper with grades. We are test optional still for this upcoming fall semester. And that means that you do not have to send SAT or ACT scores in. We can review you strictly off of your GPA. Tuition wise at PNW, we really strive to be as competitive as possible. We understand that tuition is an investment, but we want you to know that you are investing in yourself and your future. So PNW for in-state students is about $8,000 a year. So that means if you live in the state of Indiana, it's gonna be around that number. We also have a reduced out-of-state tuition, meaning that anywhere else in the United States, your tuition is gonna be about 11,500 a year. Now I understand uh, that's still quite a bit of chunk of money. So there are different ways to help pay for that. Uh, of course, there is the FAFSA, but PNW does offer scholarship opportunities. Our priority deadline for all of our scholarships is December 1st. For our admissions academic achievement scholarship, there is no additional application you have to do. We review every single student for it on their application. We review that by December 1st and then let you know right around Christmas time. Outside of the admission scholarship, we do offer many PNW specialty scholarships that could be based off your major, community service, or possibly different areas of interest that you may have. We do offer different uh, student life and living on campus opportunities. Our Hammond campus does offer two resident halls for students to choose from. They are an apartment style, which is really nice because you have your own bedroom and just share a bathroom with one person. Uh, they are fully furnished, so you don't have to carry a couch up a flight, couple flights of stairs, and there's a full kitchen area as well. They have many different amenities, including 24-7 guest services, and it's about $5,700 on top of your tuition. We understand at PNW that there are many things that students need to become successful. So we're very proud to offer many student resources and academic services for free to our students. This is a very small list of them that we offer. We do offer free tutoring for our students, both in person and virtual. We have a writing center that helps you with your papers. 
We have an amazing career center that helps you with uh, career coaching and job opportunities, as well as we take student mental health very seriously here at PNW. We do offer an amazing counseling and disability access center for our students, which is completely free and confidential. And we have many great resources for first generation students, meaning you're the first in your family to be going to college with our trio student support services. So I highly suggest taking advantage of all of these. Um, I know as myself, as a student, they were very beneficial. We are in CAA Division II athletics, so we're very proud about that. So if you'd like to be part of the pride, we welcome you for that. As well as having many campus traditions, we have over 80 different student clubs and activities. Here's a little list of different things that we like to do on campus. And we definitely would love for you to come see us in person as soon as possible. But until then, we do have some virtual uh, tour options. So thank you guys so much for your time. Hope to see you soon. Awesome. Thank you. Our next presenter is from Indiana University Northwest. All right. Well, good evening. My name is Candace Rayburn. I am from IU Northwest and I'm going to attempt to share my screen. And this is absolutely my first six by six. So I'm going to try to stay within the time. So IU Northwest is absolutely a part of the Indiana University system. We have nine campuses throughout the state of Indiana. And of course, we're the uh, Northwest most campus. Just a couple of quick facts about us. We're a small campus, so we have about uh, a little less than 4,000 students. Uh, we offer 70 plus student organization and clubs. We offer scholarships, uh, over 200 academic merit scholarships. And we're, we've been ranked one of the um, most safest campuses within the uh, nation. Um, I also like to point out that we do offer sports for our students as well. We're a division two NAIA uh, school. We, or, we offer 70 plus degree programs through our um, five schools of college. And I'll just kind of go through and show you there. College of Arts and Sciences, School of Health and Human Services, where we have our nursing program. Health and Human Services really is an um, Indiana University niche of ours. School of Arts, School of Business and Economics, and then School of Education. IU has been deemed one of the most affordable um, four-year institutions in the state of Indiana. And for Indiana residents, roughly tuition for academic year and fees is about, I roughly say, $75, 7600 For our Illinois residents, we do have a special rate, which is roughly uh, 11400 for academic year. I just kind of wanted to share a little video about how our students um, have been thriving, especially during this COVID time. I hope it plays. Let me share my screen here. And I hope I share my, my, uh, my sound. I'm gonna share my screen again. College is a time for learning, exploring, and growing. It's when you get to shape the person you want to be and the life you want to live. And at Indiana University Northwest, it's a journey you won't take alone. Our award-winning faculty, caring staff, and encouraging support teams are here for you every step of the way. We care about your future. We care about your success, and it shows. This year, many of our students have persevered in the face of the pandemic and have done their best to thrive in their own way. I didn't really know what to expect when I transitioned from high school to college, especially in the middle of COVID-19. In high school, my online classes were very different than they are here. The technology here is better, the classes are more engaging, and I'm learning so much more. Some of my classes are online and some of my classes are in person. It all just depends on your course of study. My professors have been very supportive and understanding, and they work really hard to make sure that I'm doing well in school and in life. Many of the hands-on learning opportunities students enjoy are still available. They just look a little differently. 
One of the cool things about being a student here is the strong interaction between faculty and staff. We're a pretty small campus, so there are a lot of opportunities at IU Northwest you won't find anywhere else. For example, I'm conducting research alongside my biology professor. We're studying antibiotic resistant bacteria and ways to stay one step ahead of superbugs. The pandemic hasn't slowed down our research. We've been taking extra safety precautions like wearing masks and sanitizing the lab very thoroughly. Efforts like these, as well as an ambitious testing program, have led to low rates of COVID-19 on campus. IU researchers recently found that infection risk was not higher among students attending more in-person courses, making IU Northwest one of the safest campuses in the state. The fact that everyone works so hard on campus to keep us safe means a lot to me. It shows me that people care and it feels good to know that my professors and friends have my back. When I doubt myself, I think about all the love and support and remember why I am in school in the first place. To help me achieve my dream, it encourages me to keep going. At IU Northwest, we want students to succeed because we know that the payoff is tremendous. College degree holders earn more money and have more job stability, with the recent study showing that the average bachelor's degree holder from IU Northwest sees an increase of more than $20,000 in earnings each year, compared to someone with a high school diploma working in Indiana. But perhaps more importantly, the adversity we are all facing now is leading to new ways of doing things and teaching us to overcome any obstacles in our way. The silver lining is that these reimagined experiences are preparing students to enter a world where innovation and resilience is needed more than ever. If you're wondering if you can still have fun in college while dealing with a pandemic, the answer is definitely yes. With 70 student-led clubs on our campus, our student volunteer leaders have been working around the clock to make sure we stay connected to each other. We've hosted drive-in movie nights, food drives, and giveaways, philanthropy week, Zoom games, sporting events, and so much more. We're all in this together, so why not have some fun together? Yeah, it's been great. If you're thinking about putting off college, don't. I've really pushed myself this semester, and I am so glad I did, because it's worth it. To learn more about how you too can thrive at IU Northwest, Visit iun.edu today. So I hope you had an opportunity to see the video. Um, and just, and I just want, I'm trying to share my screen and I guess I'm having technical difficulties here but I'm gonna share one more time so I can share a little bit more information for us. We are at time. If you oh. wanna just put it on the, um, put it on, uh, just flash it for our attendees really quickly. Sure. Um, and then uh, we'll go ahead and move over if there's time left over then. Perfect. I just wanted to let you know, we're still accepting applications. If you visit our website, iun.edu, you are able to apply and then um, we're available for additional questions. You always can email us or even call. So thank you. I'm sorry for over my time. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Um, very informative information. So I hope um, everyone um, has learned a lot and it's greatly appreciated. Our next presenter is from Millican University. Hi, thank you. Let me share my screen. All right. Um, my name is Lauren Bartell and I am a senior regional admission counselor at Millican University. Um, I am also a Millican grad. So I graduated from Millican in 2018 with a math degree and started working for our admission office after that. Um, just to give you the baseline of where we're located, Millican is located in Decatur, Illinois. Um, we're about as central Illinois as you can get. Um, and we're right where that blue pin is on the map there. So not too far of a drive for any of you that are in Indiana. Um, we have about 75,000 residents in the town and the surrounding area. And we have a really positive relationship with the Decatur community. Um, our residents are always attending our students' athletic events and fine arts events and looking for job and internship opportunities for our students as well. So it's great to be really supported by the community that we're in. 
Just some basics about us. We have 2,000 students enrolled at Millikan. We have over 50 academic programs and over 90 student organizations. Um, we are a part of uh, Division Three CCIW Athletics. We have 23 men and women's Division Three sports if you're interested in participating in sports. Um, our student to faculty ratio is 10 to one with our average class size being about 16. Um, that's really great because you will get to know your professor super well and you will not just be a number in a lecture hall to them. You will have the opportunity to make real relationships with them as well as the other students that are in your major um, and definitely form that, that close-knit community and have those personal interactions. Um, we do have a 99.4% graduate success rate as well, meaning that 99% of our graduates um, were employed or went on to grad school within six months of graduation. So as much as we want you to enjoy your time at Millikan, it's good to know that you will be set up for success on the back end as well. Millikan is broken up into four colleges and schools of the majors that we offer. As I said before, we have over 50 academic programs. The College of Arts and Sciences houses your kind of traditional school subjects. So some of our more popular ones are English, math, science, um, a lot of the health sciences. And then we have the College of Fine Arts, which is what Millikan is actually most well known for. So about 30% of our students are in the College of Fine Arts, and that is theater, music, and art combined. Then the College of Professional Studies are all of those majors that require a professional degree like nursing, education, athletic training. Um, we do have a direct entry nursing program that I wanted to point out as well. And then our Tabor School of Business houses our eight business majors. Um, across the board, no matter what, where your major would be housed or what college it would be under, you will have the opportunity to take classes from any of the colleges and schools because our students are getting well-rounded educations. Um, we actually were founded on what we call performance learning. So we really focus on hands-on learning from your very um, first classes on campus. Um, we want our students to get that hands-on experience in conjunction with what they're learning in the classroom so that they're prepared to go into their field with a lot of experience, not just knowledge. Uh, we have over 90 student organizations at Millikan, everything from academic groups to fine arts groups, Greek life, student government, um, our athletics. So most of our students are very involved. Um, you will be hard pressed to find a student that just goes from their residence hall to their class and back every day. Most of our students are involved in multiple different student activities. Um, we have about 30% of our campus involved in Greek life and about 40% involved in athletics. So those are two Two big parts of our campus culture as well. Um, and it's a great way to meet students outside of your major, outside of your grade, um, and have the opportunity to connect with more people across campus. We do have a ton of study abroad opportunities at Millikan as well. We have over 53 partner universities in over 22 countries. So those are the traditional semester long, long study abroad opportunities. Um, but if you are not interested in being gone for a whole semester, we have shorter opportunities as well. We call them immersion courses. So you still get to travel with a Millikan professor and Millikan classmates, still get class credit for it. Um, but you're just traveling for a week or two over winter break or a week or two in the summer. So you still get that travel experience experience without um, leaving your life on campus or leaving your friends and family for the whole semester. So whatever study abroad opportunity sounds interesting to you and would be the best fit for you, we have a Center for International Education on our campus that works with our students to find those opportunities and to make them the most cost effective that they can be as well. Um, how to apply to Millikan. Our application for the fall is still open. We have our own version of our application on our website, as well as we are a member of the Common App as well. Whichever way you apply, we have no application fee and no essay required. So trying to make it as easy as possible for you guys as you're applying. Um, we have moved to being test optional for the fall as well. So if you have an ACT or an SAT score that you would like to share with us, we will absolutely take it into consideration, but it is not required for admission. Um, we we will need everyone's official high school transcripts. And then depending on your GPA, we might need a few additional materials from you. If you have a 2.75 GPA or below, we will either need two letters of recommendation or for you to do an interview with your admission counselor. Um, then we'll be able to make an, ad an admission decision based on that and get back to you. Um, we do have rolling admissions, so we're still accepting applications for this fall um, and will be for the next few months. And then our application for fall 20 
2022 will be open this summer um, and students can apply for next year as well. Um, feel free to reach out to us with any questions and um, we look forward to working with some of you. Great, thank you so much. Before we get to our last um, presenter um, for the evening, I do want to uh, send another reminder that if you have any questions at all to feel free to use the Q&A button. And we do ask um, to, if it's helpful to also include the university um, or college that um, in your question so that they uh, know who to respond to um, or who knows who to, who to touch base with you. Um, again, so thank you so much. Um, our last, but certainly not least, institution is, um, our presenter is from Illinois Institute of Technology. Awesome, thank you. I'm gonna share my screen super quickly. So my name's Kaylin and I am an admission counselor at Illinois Institute of Technology. We are in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, so we're on the south side of Chicago, right across from the White Sox Stadium, if you know your, uh, your, your locations. Um, so we are the only tech focused university in Chicago. We are known for our STEM programs, but we do have other options as well. So we offer a variety of engineering programs. Uh, we have an architecture program. It is a five year professional bachelor's program and you're able to sit for your licensure exam after you graduate with us. We do have a variety of computer programs like your traditional computer science. We are the first university in the Midwest to offer an artificial intelligence program. And then we do have a couple of cybersecurity options. And then we have your traditional sciences like biology, chemistry, physics, as well as um, some more soft sciences like humanities, psychological science, uh, global studies, and then we have business administration as well. So a wide variety of programs for our students to pursue um, for kind of like size wise with us. We are a smaller university. We have roughly about 3000 undergraduates. Your average class size is going to be 22 students and all of our classes are going to be taught from professors. So you may have like a teacher's assistant or graduate assistant in the course but all the content is always gonna be delivered by our professors. So just kind of a quick snapshot into our academics. Um, for experiences, uh, we are big on hands-on learning. Um, our students describe themselves as innovators, entrepreneurs, interdisciplinary thinkers, and we provide a lot of opportunities for them to really embody that. So we have a variety of research experiences that students can pursue. You can start as early as your second semester with us for research opportunities. Um, students can also seek out really unique internships short courses to be a part of. And we, of course, have study abroad opportunities as well. Um, the one thing that we always love to talk about is our IPRO course that's required. So students will take two IPRO classes and it's called Interprofessional Projects um, Program. What this means is that students will be tasked to solve real world problems. So you'll do this towards the end of your time at Illinois Tech, and it's a really cool way to check how much you've learned um, to be solving these issues. So we do have outside companies providing prompts for students. We have a lot of faculty members providing them. Um, and some like recent examples, a group of students created an app to track food waste from grocery stores. Uh, we had a lot of students developing apps for COVID-19 updates and things like that. Um, so it's a really nice way to kind of tie your education all together to see what you've learned as you solve some of these real world issues. Um, so that's just kind of like a quick look about all the additional things you get to do outside of your traditional class experience. Um, we do have over 150 student organizations on campus. We have Greek life, we have professional organizations like Engineers Without Borders, MedLife, and things like that. Uh, we also have just some fun groups to join. We have Quidditch if you're a Harry Potter fan. Um, we have a variety of acapella groups on campus and things like that. So most likely we have something that you're interested already formed on our campus, but if not, it's very easy to start a new organization on campus. Uh, we are NCAA Division III uh, Athletics, so if you're looking to be a, a student athlete, you can definitely do that here. Um, our coaches understand that you're here to get a degree, so they schedule practices before classes start or after, so it's never like you're picking class or practice, um, and you still get that competitive environment while you're pursuing a degree here with us. Um, and then for residential experiences, we do require our students live on campus for their first two year uh, two years for our incoming students you have four different options so you have case call um, and Cunningham Hall which is 
Cunningham Hall is the newest one for fall 2021. They're pod style. So you have triples, doubles, singles, and then gender neutral bathrooms in the center of the floor. Uh, John and Jean Row Village is this picture right here. It's your suite style. Uh, these balconies up top give you a fantastic view of the fireworks display that the White Sox set off um, occasionally. And then McCormick Student Village is your more traditional style dorming option for students. Uh, but 70% of our students live on campus. So we are definitely a residential campus. Plus, you never want to have to fight Chicago traffic to get to class on time. So it's way more convenient to be on campus. And then just to kind of switch over into admission. Uh, so we are on the Common App and it's free to apply. So we don't have an application on our website. You'll just do it through the Common App. Uh, we do require your official high school transcript as well as at least one letter of recommendation. It can come from a counselor, a teacher, a coach. It just can't come from a family member. And we will accept up to three letters. Uh, we are test optional for fall 21. And then for the juniors in our audience right now, we are most likely gonna be test optional for fall 2022. So just keep an eye on our website to see about that. Uh, and then if you are looking at like our architecture program, a portfolio is optional, but not required when you're applying. We are rolling admission. So um, we will accept applications up until August 1st for you current seniors who haven't applied yet. And then for my juniors, uh, you will be able to apply most likely August 1st of your senior year. And we usually keep it within like a two week decision timeline um, to get back to you. And here's just kind of like a quick snapshot of what the middle 50% looks like. Uh, we are rigorously, uh, a rigorously academically challenged institution. So we wanna make sure that you're doing well in high school when you transition over to us. So we wanna see that you're taking honors and AP courses, that you've taken pre-calculus and above, um, that you're definitely doing four years of math and four years of science. Um, so that's just kind of an idea of what it looks like to be an admitted student. And before I end, I just want to give a quick snapshot of our scholarships. All students are automatically considered for a scholarship when you apply. Um, so this is the Henry T. Heald for our domestic students ranging from 10 to 30,000. International um, students are also considered uh, at 10,000. And then for juniors, if you apply by November 15th, you have the chance for some of these full tuition ones. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. I'm more than happy to answer them. I work with all students from India. So thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Um, we do have a little bit of time left. And so um, we are going to jump right into our Q&A portion. And so I'll ask all the presenters at this time, if you can turn on your cameras, unmute yourself, and we'll jump into the first question, which is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Again, what advice would you give someone going through the co college search process? And with our limited time, um, and, to, and to ensure that everyone has a chance to answer, um, I do ask that you please keep your responses um, slightly brief. So we'll go ahead and start um, and go ahead and begin. Right. Um, so the advice that I would give is I know that cost is a pretty large consideration to students as they're evaluating their college choices. And so just want to encourage everyone not to put too much emphasis on the sticker price initially that you see, number one, because there's a lot of scholarships that are out there um, that are available to you if you're resourceful. And secondly, um, consider not just the cost, but your return on the on your investment. So what are what is your future potential earnings and how does that stack up compared to the tuition that you're paying? Uh, yeah, no, I, I fully agree with that. Um, I would also say that the one benefit I think of COVID is that so many universities now have switched over to uh, a more virtual type of admission process. So now your opportunity to you know virtually visit some of these schools are amazing. So don't just say, I only want to go to schools in this area. Uh, you can now look the entire country wide. So never, never think a school is, it isn't for you, but you've never actually taken a look at it. Look as much as you can. Looking's free. A lot of the virtual events that we do, all these universities do are free. So just look everywhere and something's going to click. Yeah, definitely echoing with my colleagues. Um, do your research ahead of time. Look at all of your options. Uh, take advantage of those virtual events. And then when we are able to have in-person events, please visit the universities that you're interested in. You'll never know if you are really going to love it there until you are actually on that campus. And, you know, I just want to jump in. I guess I'm piggybacking because my thought was absolutely when you can visit the campus, visit. Uh, you want to make sure it's a good fit. You you're comfortable there. You could be successful. And then I also encourage... Um, 
and for seniors, we're, we're still accepting applications, but for those juniors in the fall of the year, apply to your top three or four schools before that December 1st. Uh, scholarship deadlines, most of them are around that December 1st deadline to at least have been uh, applied and admitted for admissions-based scholarships. And I hate for uh, dollars to be sitting on the table in the spring if you change your mind and decide to go to a different institution. I'm also the scholarship coordinator, so I see that a lot from students. So I encourage you to apply in the fall one time so that you have some options when you make your decision in the spring. Yeah, I think all of those definitely and would also add, don't be afraid to use your admission counselors. We are real people that are here who want to help you and enjoy helping you. And that is our job. Um, we are not these scary people on the other end of the computer or the phone. So we are eager to help you guys through this process and don't hesitate to um, build a relationship with us and reach out to us because we're only here to help. I was going to echo that exactly to utilize us um, and then you know especially if you're looking to get a real insight into what the college university life is like you know connect with us and we can get you in contact with a student um, or a professor and things like that to give you a better view um, i'd also say you know utilize summer programs a lot of universities are offering them online and they're still you know running so for those of you that are juniors and below check those out that's a really cool way to get an inside scoop about the university before you know you start applying All great advice um, directly from our admission um, representatives. So thank you so much. Um, I think that everyone can take something um, and, and, and it, it resonates with them. So thank you. Um, and so we've now reached the end of our webinar for tonight. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Um, before we close, um, as you close out this window, there will be a very quick four question survey that will will appear. Um, if you have any feedback for us, please take a moment to share that on that survey. Um, it's always very helpful. And then uh, there are more sessions going on. Um, so if you are interested to sign up for more sessions at the next time slot, please do that for uh, please do that where you registered for this one. And then lastly, this recording will be available a week from today at strivescan.com backslash Indiana. Thank you so much and have a great evening.